Hey there. Well, hey there. Today we've got something a little bit different for you. Different sort of unboxing. I've just had a couple of deliveries from Green Life Soil and Satco, two of my favourite places uh, to buy garden gear. I thought it might be an idea to have a look at the different sorts of mulches and some of the uh, different sorts of manures that we use around the garden. Uh, let you know what I think the benefits are, which ones I like, how I use them, and what they actually do. First one we'll have a look at is pea straw. Now this is pea straw here. It's a little bit different to normal hay. A couple of reasons. Uh, first one is it's much finer. So if we have a look at the texture of this, it's actually quite fine, flexible, <coughs> dusty. And that makes it easy to put out in the garden. I'll show you the guinea pig straw, which is normal wheat straw uh, that's out the front. You'll see a couple of issues with that. But we lay this out, usually pretty thickly. So I'll grab a big bunch of it like that that comes away in sort of these wedges. And we just sort of shake it out, drop it around and have it fairly thick. There it's about six inches, 150 millimeters thick, but once it gets wet and I walk over it a bit, it'll be a little bit thinner, but a couple of inches at least. And this will stop the weeds coming up. Let's have a look at the straw I got from the guinea pig lady. And you'll see it's quite different. So down here, we've got pretty standard straw that you buy from a pet store. Uh, it's quite stiff, has long parts in the tubes, and unfortunately, a lot of seeds. I should take this inside and find out what sort of seed it is. But this is the seed that's come from the, the cut, uh, the cut hay. And as we can see, I've got lots of it germinating. And as I said, I consider this a weed because it's growing where I don't want it. However, big plus on this stuff is it's got the guinea pig poo in it and it's free. So I don't mind it at all, particularly out here on the verge. This pea straw is a great soil conditioner. It can improve your soil a lot. Uh, it adds nitrogen to the soil. If the uh, peas do grow, let them grow, and that adds more nitrogen to the soil. It tends to last as a mulch for around eight to 10 months. And when it breaks down, it returns that nitrogen to the soil. Uh, it's good organic matter and really helps us out there. As I said, it suppresses weeds and we'll see this in the guinea pig out the front. It's also good for protecting against soil erosion. So it'll stop the water flowing uh, and cutting channels through the garden if you've got a bit of a slope. Uh, and that's a handy thing, particularly in our very sandy soil that we have here. And the earthworms love it. So once you get this down, you'll find the earthworms will come around and help break this down and generally just improve the garden. So, I love this stuff, I reckon it's great. It's not terribly expensive, and it's great for the garden. Looking a little bit closer. Noisy cars. Looking a bit closer at it, we can see that it's quite a bit finer than normal straw. It's a bit flexible. Importantly, it doesn't have things like wheat seed in it, which can be really annoying if it starts growing. The peas you get growing from this, generally not your normal sort of peas, not very tasty. I think they're used as dried peas or cattle food or you know, cooking peas for stews and things. But if they come up, great, they put more nitrogen in the soil. So I use this as a general covering of my larger beds. I received five bales, there they are there. I'll pop a price for them up the uh, top there. But when you get a few of them at a time, they're not that expensive. So what's next? Well, I bought these in their packs of five, and that's five bags of their potting mix. This is here, and that's a heavy bag of potting mix. If we look inside, you'll see it's not just wood chips and bark. There's a reasonable amount of sand in here. It's got lots of nutrients added. Um, it looks like it'll be a really good potting mix. And only small bits of stick, which look to be relatively well composted. So it sticks together a little bit when you do the hand crushing exercise. I think it's going to be quite good. So we will save that for our very sensitive plants. The other thing I bought from them, and I will put the prices up there, is their veggie concentrate. And this is a concentrate that we mix between 25 and 
with this horrible sand that we have in WA. And if we look at that, it is a very heavy soil improver. It doesn't look like it's got bark and wood chips to any great extent in there. Um, it's a lot heavier than the, the potting mix. Rufus has come for a cameo. Hello, Ruf. <clears throat> and as I said, I mix that about, depending on what I'm growing, either 25% or 50% of the soil, sand, um, and it allows me to actually grow things directly in the ground uh, here in our horrible environment. So two very good products that I get from, from Green Life there, uh, along with the pea hay and the fish hydrosolate or whatever it's called. The fish juice, that's what it is. So we'll just call it that, fish juice. Ah. Let's unload this and have a look at the rest. We will go off and do a pH test of the, the potting mix uh, to see how that goes. Um, I would expect it'll be right in the neutral range because Green Life look after their stuff and they do a good job of producing it and have decent quality control, unlike a lot of the other potting mixes I've bought. Let's do a quick pH test on that Green Life soil potting mix. And here we have it here. I mean, the colours don't pick up very well on this camera, but it's actually matching a six. Yep, definitely a six. So that's good. What you can't see down here is the other thing from Green Life Soil. Fish hydrolysate. Now, this fish emulsion I use whenever I can get it. I reckon this is great stuff. The difference between this and your standard fish emulsions is this is undiluted. It's still got the fish oils in it which is really good for the microbes and the uh, growing of plants. However, it does leave sort of an oily smear on your leaves, not much, but a little bit, um, and it won't taste very nice if you put it on your leafy green veggies and not wash it off completely. Be a little bit careful with it. It's certainly not gonna hurt you, it just probably tastes terrible. Uh, it doesn't smell too great either, but it's, I shouldn't say that. It's okay, it doesn't have much of an odor. One of the Interesting things that they recommend is putting some diluted, of course, into your worm farm, and the worms like it. I'm not sure I'll do that, but um, might be worth a little bit more research to think about. Hey, we can use it as a folate, uh, so spray it directly on the leaves and it'll do some good there, or we can add it to the soil, water it in, lots of different ways to use it. It's suitable for any type of soil. I think it's fairly neutral. Uh, but one thing to be wary of is, particularly in our climate where it's really hot and dry, uh, because it's got that oil in there, if you do it in a really hot weather, that could act like a magnifying glass and burn the leaves. So they suggest don't put it out on the really hot days or put it out at night uh, and let it soak in. I really like this and I try to get it whenever I can. Um, it's much better than the fish emulsion you buy uh, from normal hardware stores. Uh, it's actually quite watery normally, but I don't think that matters. It certainly seems to work very well. I'll put a price for it. Up there and I'll also show the one that I buy when I can't get this which is also quite good for a variety of reasons that's uh, Charlie Carp they make use of the pest fish to create this stuff so it's getting rid of a feral animal and it's good for the garden but I still prefer this stuff let's have a look at our Satco stuff something a little bit different well here I am with my Satso to Satso delivery and I've got a couple of interesting different things this time, which we'll have a, a quick look at. And I'm not sure how this is going to go, and I'll, I will let you know. But they do something called piggy post. So this is composted pig poo, and that's uh, quite different. Because pigs are not necessarily herbivores, um, I was pretty doubtful about using pig manure. But having read what they do to this stuff, and I'll put a link to it up there, I think it's actually quite safe. I trust these guys, because they're... A, Local West Australian company, they've got a good wrap around the place uh, and they seem to be quite open and honest about what they're doing. So, why don't we have a look what it's like. Okay, so I'm going to make a little nick in the top here. And it's very fine. It doesn't have any unpleasant smell or anything. It looks extremely composted down. I think one of the other really important parts with this piggy post is it's environmentally friendly. Um, pig manure is a big waste product and if we can reuse it safely, I reckon we should. So I'll put this on some trial plants, we'll see how it goes. 
The other thing we've got is triple C, which is corn, chicken, and canola, thought it was. Uh, and this is a very fine mulch. I tend to use this a lot in pots uh, because it's got the chicken manure in it. It adds a little bit more nourishment, but it's, as I said, very fine. And we'll go and have a look at the texture of it uh, with some that I've got open out the back. Final one from them, sugarcane mulch. Now this I'm not going to put in the garden. This is for my mushrooms. But since I'm getting the delivery and paying the delivery on the triple C and the piggy post, thought I'd grab some of this for when it cools down a bit. It'll keep. All right. Let's have a look at one other thing before we go on. This, again, is a bit of an experiment. I have mentioned it in one of my other videos, but an old workmate of mine retired down to Denmark, which is a town a fair way south of Perth, and he's got llamas, or alpacas, I should say. I don't know which they are. Is there any difference? Who cares? Well, they do, obviously. But anyway, he brought up some packapoo, and it, has been composting for ages. It looks like it's going to have to be broken up a bit because it's in big cow patty type things. That will be an interesting experiment to see what that's like too. So I'll put that somewhere separate on a different plant that I can keep an eye on and I'll let you know how well Packapoo works. Here's a sugarcane mulch I opened earlier. And if we have a look at it, it's very, very fine and dusty. So the bits are chopped very fine, small, which makes it great for mushroom growing. It's easy to pasteurize. Uh, it's a waste product, so we're actually being fairly economically, economically? ecologically sound um, or environmentally sustainable, whatever term you want to use. So I buy this 90% for my mushrooms. However, you can use it in the garden as a mulch. I'm not sure how much nourishment it would give back to the garden. I think probably a little bit uh, and the earthworms will probably enjoy it and it will keep the moisture in so it'll perform as a mulch but I think there are better ones out there to use things like the pea straw we saw earlier again lots of nitrogen in it I will have a look and I'll post it in the comments or uh, the description somewhere about what this will give back to the garden but honestly I don't think it's very much which is why for the bulk of my mulching I use this upside down i'm not going to turn it upside down because it's open but it's triple c as i said this has a mix of canola corn and chicken poop in it which makes it totally unsuitable for mushrooms and again it's very fine so when you want to get it into a pot it's in a nice little pieces so you can actually put it around the pot it'll cover it properly and fill in all the gaps uh, but that added chicken poop uh, the mix of corn canola it's really good for the garden. It breaks down fairly slowly. Um, every few months I've got to replace it, probably five or six months. It's the right sort of consistency for pots, even fairly small ones. So that's why I use that. So that's a few of the things I'm going to use for mulching and fertilizing. Main thing is it's all organic. I think that's really the critical part. What do you use? You got any favorites, local ones, particular type that you use for a particular plant? Let me know in the comments. It'd be nice to share the knowledge. Man, you are. That was a lot of crap, wasn't it? <laughs> anyway, enjoy life. Catch in the garden.